Hello. In this sequence, we'll learn more about Seaside, especially the part that generates HTML. You recall that all Seaside components respond to render content on messages. This message is what enables us to generate the appropriate HTML code. This method has a parameter named HTML. It is an object instance of the WAHTML canvas class or subclass. It is dedicated, offering the programmer an API to generate valid HTML. Our counter code is here. The HTML object here is used to generate headings, anchors, spaces, etc. Today's sequence goes further into this language. The dedicated language is made up of brushes. Each brush is dedicated to generating a particular HTML tag. The API is object-oriented. Its very construction, using message sending to objects, guarantees the validity of the HTML code, unless we have made a messaging error. Here's an example using the dedicated language. I send the HTML object the message div, which will render one object. This object is a brush dedicated to generating HTML div codes. It includes the ID message and the message with. This generates a div with the attribute ID equals title. The character string identified as title will be part of the div. I can generate more complex things. The beginning is the same, HTML div ID list. This is my div line, but I can put lots of other tags inside the div. Instead of sending a character string to with, I send a script. Within that script, I can reuse my HTML object and other brushes to generate other tags. With HTML span class item, I generate a span with a class attribute and content. Now I can use loops. This DSL is as powerful as Faro. Here I generate an unordered list. It's abbreviated UL. It has an ID list attribute. I have list items inside the unordered list. They are here. Only I generated them using a loop. I have a to do one to five loop, a classic Faro loop. I generate five list items with an attribute class item, followed by the name of each list item. I have concatenated the loop cursor. Item 1, item 2, item 3, etc. We can go one notch farther and code for a different class sector CSS for each list item, depending on an odd or even loop cursor. Typically here, for example, I use the message dot class if. That means add this class if the following condition is true. Here's the one for even. You can see that in the generated code, the first list item has this particular class CSS, item odd. The second item has this CSS class, even. This one is even, this one is odd, etc., etc. The syntax is concise. It packs all the power of Faro to generate HTML using a DSL. Another feature of this dedicated language is extensibility. It is easy to make it support modern CSS frameworks like Bootstrap, for example. This CSS framework uses CSS classes to generate attractive HTML elements like green or blue backgrounds, etc. How do we go about extending the dedicated language? We have special brushes like the one here. They all have a TBS prefix, meaning Twitter bootstrap. I send the message TBS alert to my HTML object. That means generate an HTML div or element compliant with the Twitter bootstrap framework. Many brushes will refer to the TBS framework. I can render Twitter buttons with TBS button and TBS button groups this way. You can see that these three buttons all belong to one group. 
To return to the example of the counter from last session, we defined a simple counter. Now, I'll make a Twitter bootstrap version of it. It's very easy. I make a subclass of my earlier counter, called WA Twitter counter. I go to the class side of this class and define the method initialize, which specifies this component will be using the TBS development library. Here is TBS development library and JQ development library. Those are JavaScript and CSS frameworks. Next, I'll return to the instance side of this class. I'll define a new render content on method, redefining the preceding one. All my brushes will begin with TBS. TBS button group, TBS button, etc., etc. But this doesn't change my regular code, still consisting of callbacks with self-increase and self-decrease. It doesn't change a thing. The only parts that use TBS are the HTML rendering brushes. Now we'll see what my new counter looks like. The plus and minus buttons are together in my button group, and counter value is displayed on a badge in this bootstrap version. You can go even farther, beyond bootstrap. You can define your own style rules. For example, here, I decided to say that I want all odd elements to be in the odd class. Every time I render the counter value here as a TBS badge, that is, the counter value will be displayed. But I'm adding the CSS class odd, only if the value is odd. The CSS class is added only if the condition is true. I defined the CSS class odd by defining the method style on my counter. It will render a character string according to CSS style rules. Dot odd color red will make the counter red for odd numbers. To sum up, a web application is a root component. Seaside is a root component. All components can be rendered in HTML using render content on, and we have a dedicated language that is powerful and extensible. It enables us to generate HTML easily using brushes, and an extensibility that supports existing CSS frameworks, like Bootstrap, jQuery, UI, etc. You can take advantage of Pharaoh's scripting powers like loops to generate arrays of elements easily.